Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Be Restored Worship Center. I am Pastor Micah. We are so delighted that you have chose to worship with us today. Um, this day, we take delight in the Lord. He has given us another opportunity to come together, and we are so thankful today. God has been gracious to us, and we have experienced his favor on our lives. And I'm so uh, looking forward to what he's going to do through us today. So come on in and let's get ready to hear what thus said the Lord. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for bringing us together. We thank you um, that you have been with us. You've been merciful. You've been kind unto us. God, we thank you for keeping us in spite of everything going on in the world. You have been uh, with us and you have protected us and you've kept us and you've shielded us. God, we thank you that everywhere that we go, we take your name with us and you've caused a blessing to come upon our lives. So God, we are thankful to you. God, we pray that you will bless our households, that you would bless everyone connected to us. God, we thank you for the works of our hands. God, we thank you for what you're doing in our minds, our bodies, and our spirits. God, we commit our ways to you so that you can do with our lives what you want to do. God, we give you glory today. We bless you. We magnify you. God, this is your day. God, you made us. You made this day. So while we're here in this moment, we just take a moment to say thank you. Thank you for being God. Thank you for making ways. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for delivering us. God, thank you for uh, keeping our families. God, thank you for keeping our friends. God, we thank you for new doors that you've opened for us this week. God, we thank you for favor on our lives this week. God, we are so thankful for Be Restored Worship Center, for this house, for this place. And we thank you that your spirit lives here, God, that we can experience you every time we come together. God, we'll be restored worship center. We'll be restored everywhere. So God, we thank you for everyone that is connected to us, both in the north, the south, the east, and the west. God, we thank you that your word is alive here, that your uh, worship is alive here, that your praise is alive here, that what we do will bring you glory. So today, oh God, we pray for everyone that will hear this word, that you would do in them what you uh, set out to do, that your word won't return void. So God, give us a heart that is receptive to what you are saying today, that your word will take root in us, that your word will be engrafted into our hearts. God, we thank you that there will be a seed planted today that will bring forth the harvest. God, touch us, keep us, bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Again, I'm so uh, thankful for uh, you joining us here at Be Restored Worship Center. Um, I really uh, count it a privilege that you, uh, out of everywhere else you could be, everyone else you could be watching, that you decided to uh, be with us today. Amen. So we're going to go straight to the word this morning. Uh, if you will go with me to Matthew chapter 24, verse 3 through 11. Again, that's Matthew chapter 24, 3, excuse me, 3 through 8. We're going to start there. Matthew 24, 3 through 8. And it says, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, then shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, 
and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. Verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. I like to use for a topic today, breaking news. Breaking news. Um, Oftentimes when we um, turn on the TV, especially when we're looking at the news, uh, everything is breaking news. We'll see across the bottom of the screen, breaking news. Uh, doesn't matter if you were watching sports channel or a news uh, heavy channel. There's always something that is designated as breaking news that is important. That it, Listen, we want you to pay attention. So we're going to put this ticker at the bottom that will say breaking news. And we're going to give you certain highlights and certain things that you need to see that is going on in the world. We need you to be aware of what's happening. These are the current events. This is the daily news, and we want you to be in the know. So uh, currently, when we look around and we look at the world, we see that there is famine and drought in the land. Uh, We're dealing with the effects of climate change, and uh, we see oftentimes that there are earthquakes in unusual places and we have mudslides over here and uh, we have fires over there and uh, it seems like every time we turn around there is a new disease that is discovered or there's a mutation of something that we've already had to deal with but it's mutated and now it's affecting us in a new way. Um, Those of us Uh, We see it no matter where you are. When we go to the gas station, gas prices are out of control. Uh, When we go into the grocery store, there's a couple of scenarios that we're facing now. Either certain products that we're looking for, the shelves are empty, or the prices have risen astronomically. Uh, Those that are seeking housing and looking for apartments and houses, uh, we see that the affordability rate has gotten almost out of reach, that the prices are uh, rising at a high rate. And those that are in the market are now finding it difficult to find adequate housing. And anytime there is a house that is on the market, it is selling way over the asking price. Um, And when we turn on the TV and when we look at social media, there is wars and rumors of wars every day. This nation uh, fighting against this nation and uh, this uh, nation attacking another nation, trying to overtake their government. There's bombings and all kinds of civil unrest uh, in just about every country on any given day, there is a level of civil unrest. And now in this millennia, we're even having to deal with cyber warfare that oftentimes there are those that operate in the cyberspace and they're taking uh, control of infrastructures in uh, cyberspace and taking over companies and they can't function and they can't do things and they're causing the whole systems to crash. Uh, And we see that happening over and over again. And usually when it happens, there's a level of chaos that happens when people don't have access to certain things. Every pretty much everything that we do today is driven by the Internet. Right. We do everything that way. And we see political power struggles. It does not matter what city, what state, what county you live in, what country you live in. One thing that is always consistent is political struggles. But I want to tell you, listen, this is just the beginning. Breaking news, this is just the beginning. And this is a critical juncture for the believers that we have to be firmly planted in God. There are those that come saying what that they are the Christ, that they have the answer, that they're coming in the name of the Lord, and there shall be many that will be deceived. But in this hour, we have to be led by the Spirit. We have to know the voice of God so that we can hear God for real so we don't find ourselves tricked. Jesus said, he said, listen, 
Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Then he goes on, listen, I need you to understand this, that there will be, you are hear of wars and there will be rumors of wars. But he says, when you see this, don't be troubled. Don't go through no changes. All these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Then he goes on to say, uh, nations shall rise against nations. How many know we're seeing that now? Kingdoms against kingdoms. We're seeing famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. He said, these are the beginning of sorrows. It's just the beginning, just the start of what we shall see. And then uh, 20, uh, Matthew 24, 9 and 10 says this, they shall deliver you up. To be afflicted and shall kill you and shall uh, be hated and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Just because you call my name, just because you're my children, uh, there's going to be affliction. They're going to try to kill you and you're going to be hated because of my name. Then it goes to say, and then many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Listen, we look at the times and what's going on. We can see that this is going on in the world. That there are those that are offended just because of the name of Jesus. Just because you're a Christian. Just because you carry the word. Just because you stand on righteousness. There are those that are offended and would love to bring affliction upon you and even kill you because you stand on the name of the Lord. Listen, we see and there are countries around the world that uh, Christians are persecuted just based on their belief. They're having to hide to worship. And here we are in this country with a freedom to worship and we struggle to worship God. We, we got to pump and prime people to come into the house of the Lord. We got to uh, pr- provide entertainment for people to come into the house of the Lord. And you have those that are risking life and limb to come together and worship. So listen, it is going to happen. And then uh, verse 12 of 24 says, And because iniquity shall abound, The love of many shall wax cold. Listen, there's no love. People don't love God. They don't fear God. They don't have a love for his word. They don't have a love for one another because of iniquity, because uh, people have decided to do their own thing and go their own way. They have disregarded God and are not paying attention to the time. They're not paying attention to the breaking news. They uh, don't want to pay attention to what's going on in the world and would rather please their own flesh. Uh, Let's go down to verse uh, 13 and 14. It says, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end come. Then shall the end come. Listen, you've got to endure. You've got to go through. You've got to hold on to God, regardless of everything that is going on in the world, in spite of the breaking news and the reality that is going on and the rumors of what possibly could happen. We have got to hold on to God and endure. And when we endure, the Bible says the same shall be saved. Listen, you are going to be delivered out of it. You can go through it. Why? Because we have a job to do. What is that job, Pastor? We've got to take this gospel to the world. We've been commissioned to be witnesses, and we have got to be on our jobs. Listen, it's no longer uh, acceptable that we don't fulfill our purpose. It's no longer okay that we're not being witnesses. It's no longer okay that we just sit on the side and not tell others 
about this good news that we have. We can't just sit around with our legs crossed and our arms folded saying, I'm okay and I'm going to see him and I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled and that with a mighty burning fire. But we won't testify and tell a dying world about a saving savior. We know we got to endure, it says, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Those of us that will hold fast to God, we won't be deceived. We won't be tricked. We won't give in the towel. We won't uh, give up hope. We won't become faint. But those of us that will hold on to God in spite of what's going on, listen, it is a design of the enemy to have us fearful. It is a plan of the enemy to have us distracted and worried and not. And, and uh, am I going to be able to feed my family? Am I going to be able to keep my job? Am I going to be able to, to hold on to this and hold on to that? And what's going to happen if a country comes over and invades us? What if we have to go to war? Listen, we cannot be overly concerned with that. Yes, we're, we're, we're aware of it, but our first job is to pray. We got to pray at all times. It's, the Bible says that, well, listen, you got to pray for those that are in authority that you may lead a peaceable life. Listen, we've got to pray that even in the midst of troubles, that even in the midst of trials, that God will give his people peace in the midst of a storm. That we've got to we've got to pray. We got to pray for leaders, even the leaders that we don't like, even those leaders that we may feel a little off and a little crazy. We've got to pray because it's going to take the hand of the Lord to turn some things around. And if God don't do it, we would be in a terrible situation. But we trust the Lord even in this. We got to take this gospel to nations. We got to take this gospel to the world, to all nations. And the, the, it says that in, when all of this is done, when we have fulfilled that great commission, then the end shall come till all have heard. It does not matter who else, who else's love waxes cold or grows cold. It doesn't matter who else or who gets offended because of his name. There is a mandate on your life. There is an assignment on your life. You have got to endure. There is no reward in giving up. You have got to stay steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Don't lose heart because of the breaking news and what you see in front of you don't don't be disheartened don't be uh don't be ready to throw in the towel don't be ready to just give up because of what you see or the fear of what you think may happen you have got to trust in god we have a promise can you just testify? I have a promise. I, I have a promise. Go with me to Psalm 121 and 3. Psalm 121 and 3. It says, he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. God will not go to sleep on your situation. He is not absent. He is not somewhere taking a nap. God sees and he knows and he's going to keep you in the midst of what it is that you're facing and dealing with and what's going on in the world. God is a present help in trouble and he's with us. Go with me to Psalms 91. Psalms 91 is going to begin at verse 1. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. He is a shelter for us. He's a fortress for us that when the enemy comes against us, when trials come against us, when it looks like we don't have a way out 
and everything is coming up against us. We see what's the breaking news. We see what's the possibility of what may happen. God is our refuge. I can go to him. I can stay in him. I can hide from him. He will keep me and I will trust in him. Verse 3 says, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. You're not going to be ensnared in it. He's going to keep you from the pestilence. He's going to protect you. He's going to cover you so that even when everything, yes, we see it and we know he is going to keep you if you trust in him. Verse 5 says, Thou shall not be afraid of the terror by night. There's no terror. There's nothing that's going to happen in your nighttime that you need to be afraid of. Nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it will not come nigh thee. Listen, you're going to see it from afar off. You're going to see things falling. You're going to see the enemy uh, forming weapons and throwing, throwing them at you. You're going to see it, and you're going to see it fall, but the Bible says it shall not come nigh thee. It's not going to come nigh thy dwelling. It's not going to affect your house. It's not going to affect your livelihood. Yes, you're going to witness it. Yes, you're going to see it. But you're going to see the hand of God on your life. He's going to keep you from it. Doesn't matter. A thousand shall fall at thy side. And ten thousand at thy right hand. And then verse 9 says this, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Listen, we got some help. The Bible says he's going to give his angels charge charge over thee. When you see me, you don't see me by myself. Even though it may look like I'm by myself, I have angels that the Lord has dispatched to keep me. He's given his angels charge over you, over your life, that nothing that tries to come up against you it will not be successful. Why? Because I've made the Lord my habitation. I've decided to live in him. I've decided to dwell in him. I've decided to set my sight and my eyes on him. It does not matter what the breaking news says. Yes, I see it. Yes, I identify it. But I will trust in the Lord. He's my refuge. Even the most high is my habitation. So there shall be no evil that shall befall thee. It's not you not, it's not going to affect your dwelling. And then verse 13, 15, go down with me to verse 15. It says, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Isn't it amazing that we serve a God that says, I'm going to be with you in trouble. I'm not going to be far off, but I'm going to be with you in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Listen, when you call upon the Lord, he will answer you. And not only will he answer you, he's going to be with you in trouble. Listen, can I just serve some breaking news on you in your life? You're going to have to deal with some trouble. It's not always going to go smoothly. It's not always going to be perfect. And sometimes we feel like because we deal with adversity 
and trouble that God has left us and there's, there's something wrong. No, it is just God's opportunity to show you that it does not matter what the trouble is. I am with you. I'm with you in trouble. And not only am I with you because you're in trouble, because you're facing this, because you're dealing with this. I'm going to show you that I will deliver you, that I have the power to deliver you. If you keep your trust in me, I'm going to honor you. And not only am I going to honor you, I'm going to satisfy you with good life. With long life, I'm going to satisfy you with long life that uh, the enemy is trying to tell you that this is the end for you, that th sometimes you feel like is my life over. But God is saying, listen, if you call upon me, if you trust me, if you stay with me, I'm going to be with you. And the result of that shall be long life. He says that I'm going to show him. God's going to show you his salvation. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Let me say that again. Stop running all over the place. Settle your mind. Settle your spirit and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He is going to do it. You are not going to have to fight in this battle. But if you would hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battles. He will do it. But we, you're going to mess up trying to fight this battle. You're going to mess up trying to work things out on your own. You're going to mess up trying to be concerned about the wars and the rumors of war. Uh, being concerned about supply chain issues. You're going to run yourself ragged, worried about sickness and disease. But you have got to, in this hour, in this moment, make sure that you are connected to God. Because this is just the beginning of sorrows. It's, 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 it's not about to end. Just as one thing ends, something else happens. But we have peace and we have joy. Why? Because we trust in the Lord. That's the difference. So whatever's going on, you're not going to see it. You're going to see it, but it's not going to affect you. It's going to be a far off. You're going to recognize it. But God is going to be with you in this time in this season in this hour and all he's saying listen what i need for you to do is fulfill my purpose in the earth i need you to to walk out this walk i need you to take this gospel everywhere you go i need you to show forth my glory in the earth i have called you i have ordained you listen it's not about a title it does not matter if somebody calls you prophet, pastor, elder, missionary. It does not matter. Why? Because the greatest of all of these are servant, and it is our duty to serve the Lord. And in our service, we take the name of Jesus and this gospel. What is this gospel? That he is able to save and deliver and set free. Listen, you ought to know this God that I serve. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. And he's going to be with you. He is not a foreign God that is afar off. He's not a, a, an idol God that can't hear you when you pray. But when you pray, he hears you. And not only does he hear you, but he is with you in the midst of of whatever you are going through, whatever is going on in your household, whatever is going on around you, God is with you. He has made us a promise that he will not renege on, that he will be with us, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. He says, I am with you even until the end of the world. He's going to be with us through it all. 
in the midst of it all. He's going to be with us. And we can rest assured when you rest in the fact that God is with you in the midst of it, you can rest in him. You can praise him. You can worship him and you can thank him in the midst of it all because you know that God, you are going to deliver and keep me. God, you're going to do it. So listen, we're going to declare this today that we won't feel the full effect of economic volatility. That we won't experience drought and famine. We have enough stored. We're healthy. Our mind is stable. We are strong and of good courage. The weapons coming against us won't prosper. Uh, we're fully committed to God. So my fruit will continue to prosper. I have fav the favor of God on my life and my name. Let me say that again. I have the favor of God on my life and on my name. God will open every door that needs to be opened and he will shut every door that needs to be closed. I will not lose heart because of wars and rumors of war. My trust is in God to protect and sustain me and my household. I have enough in my house and I have enough to bless the house of God. I have enough. I'm not going to feel the full weight of what's going on in the world. Yes, I see it. Yes, I understand. But because I trust in God, I'm going to prosper in the, in the middle of drought, in the middle of famine, in the middle of destruction. He's going to cause your house and you to be blessed. It's going to be a testimony of what God is able to do. That even now he's telling you, he's going to instruct you what to put away, what to, what to set aside, what to store up. So that when things happen, we will be positioned and we will be in a place to distribute. When there were times of famine, God always set his people up. When there were times of drought, he always made provisions for them. He's going to make provisions for you. Breaking news, God is with you and you will not fail. You're not going to fail. Don't lose heart. Don't be scared. Don't be fearful. But make the Lord your habitation. What are you saying? Dwell in him. Live in him every single day. Connect yourself with him. So that whatever comes across your screen as breaking news. You will take refuge in the Lord. Saying, God. I see it, but I know you have it in control. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to stress about it. It's nothing I can do about it. But God, you made a promise that you'll be with me in trouble. That you'll provide for me. God, you, you're going to do it. You're going to show me your salvation. That when I call on you, you will answer. Call on the name of the Lord. And he's going to answer you. He's going to answer you. And you're only going to see it from afar off. It's not going to come nigh your dwelling. It's not, you're not going to feel the effects of it in your house. You're not going to feel the effects of it in your bank account. You're not going to feel the effects of it in your investments. You're not going to feel the effects of it. It's not going to affect your praise and your worship. It's not going to make you draw back, but it's going to make you go even harder for God. 
Why? Because we've got to take this gospel everywhere. Don't be troubled. All these things must come to pass. All these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. But we know that even though there, the world may be sorrowful, there are things that are going on. But we have peace. And when we have the Lord with us, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we rest in the liberty and the freedom that we have in God, that he is our joy. He is our peace. And wherever we are, we have God. Dear Lord, we thank you today that you are with us. God, we won't be distracted we won't be fearful of the conditions that are going on in the world today and what we see. God, we thank you that you are making provision for us, that you are giving us favor in the marketplace and on our jobs, that when everything seems to be going down, God, cause us to be prosperous. God, provide increase and promotion for us even in uncertain times. God, we thank you that you are God and you're with us. So, God, we call on you. We call on you, and we know that you will answer. God, touch the hearts of your people, those that have uh, been fearful or are doubting what will happen next, that you would keep your people and God, we, we pray and we know that your spirit is in every nation. So God, you do what you want to do. God, we know that the king's heart, that every ruler, every leader, their heart is in your hand. And you can turn it whichever way you will. So God, turn the heart of every leader in the direction that you want to turn it. And God, we say today, your will be done. We accept your will. And most of all, God, we are committed to you. We'll stay connected to you and we'll fulfill our purpose. God, we are committed to this, on this day to take this gospel and to take your name everywhere that we go so that the people can hear of a savior that's in the world today, that you are alive, that you reign, that you rule, and you're able to save and deliver. God, we thank you for your salvation. We thank you for your delivering power. And God, we thank you that we are not subject to the breaking news of this world, but we are so blessed and connected to your good news. Regardless of what the breaking news is, we have your good news, we have your gospel, and we hold fast to your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. God bless you, God bless you. I pray that this word uh, met you where you are, um, but I really believe that, that God is positioning us that we will not feel the full weight of what's going on in the world, that he will protect us. He will keep us um, in the midst of everything that's going on. He's kept us uh, for the last couple of years. He's going to continue to keep us, and he's going to direct our path. Listen, this is an excellent time. If you're saying, listen, I want to know this Savior. I want to know this God that you are preaching about. I see what's going on in the world, but I want to have that kind of peace in the midst of the storm. We offer you Jesus Christ today. That all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God sent his son, that he is the true son of God, and that he came and dwelt among us, 
and that he died for us. But not only did he die, but he rose with all power in his hand and he's coming back for us. That when this life is over, he's gone away to prepare a place for us that we would be with him forever. This is a perfect opportunity that while he's knocking on the door of your heart, that you would open up and let him in today. We don't have a lot of time, right? We see what's being fulfilled in scripture now. So we understand and know that this is just the beginning, but we are so thankful that we have God on our side. So we offer him to you the Christ. Listen, don't accept anything, no, no other gods. Don't accept any false person saying that they are the Christ, but we give you Jesus Christ today. Amen. And that is our prayer that you receive him today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Um, we bless the Lord for you. Um, this is uh, the perfect time. Um, to sow into the kingdom of God and we believe and know that even in the midst of everything going on that we're not fearful we're not holding back even in our sowing that we believe and know that God will sustain us that even as we sow into the kingdom of God um, we don't have to hold on to our seed for fear of what's going to happen but we can sow knowing that God will take care of us Amen. So we have uh, multiple ways that you can sow into the ministry here. Be restored worship center, your tithe, your offering. Um, you can sow that now. Uh, if you have the Givelify app, uh, look for Be Restored Worship Center, Lithia Springs, Georgia. Once you find it, if you have not saved it, go ahead and save it. So it, it will be there um, and you can give there. You can go to PayPal at Be Restored Worship Center, Lithia Springs, and give there. You can go to our website, berestored.net, and give on our website. Or you can go to the Be Restored Worship Center uh, mobile app, and the links to give are there as well. Um, and I would encourage you um, to download um, our mobile app so that you can stay connected to us, that you can uh, know what's going on in the ministry if you want to be a part of the ministry um, you can connect with us there or if you have a prayer request um, you can send that through the app you can see all of our previous teachings so if you've missed uh, any of our uh, Wednesday nights or Sundays you can go right to the app and you can watch and listen there is a great tool as we endeavor to take this gospel all around the world and man it's a a wonderful tool that we believe will uh, enhance your life. Amen. And we are so thankful for every seed that you sow into uh, Be Restored Worship Center. We endeavor to be good stewards over uh, the seed that you sow and to be integral with your seed. Amen. Because we are stewards over God's house, his people, and uh, his money. Amen. It does not belong to us. We are so thankful that you uh, made a decision to sow today. And we are so uh, looking forward to the harvest. Amen. That will come from the seed that you sow today. God bless you. Listen, I'm so thankful. Again, I'm so thankful to you uh, for joining us here today. We'll be back here on uh, this Wednesday uh, for our Life Empowerment Wednesdays. Um, as we will uh, continue in our, uh, the Lord says the same, our Heart Matters series. I pray that that has been blessing you on Wednesdays. Um, we've been in our Heart Matters series, so we'll be back here at 730 Eastern Standard Time right here on Facebook Live. Uh, make sure you join us. And then we'll be back here on Sunday at 10 a.m. Um, right here in our Facebook space. Listen, I am so excited. Listen, mark your calendar, make preparation, uh, come from far and wide, but we will be having in-person service on Sunday, March the 20th. Again, Sunday, March 20th, we will be in the sanctuary for worship 
on March the 20th. It'll be our first uh, collective in-person service for 2022. And man, come as you are. You don't have to be dressed up, but just come out and prepare to really give God a praise on that Sunday. And to hear what this said, the Lord will start with our uh, intercessory prayer for those that are in person at 945. So make sure you get here so you can get a seat. And then uh, 10 o'clock, we'll be streaming live for our virtual audience at 10 a.m. Amen. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see you in the house of the Lord. I, I miss all of you. And I'm just so um, ready to come together and worship him in spirit and truth and have just a celebration of what the Lord is doing. Listen, we are asking that uh, you do continue to, to wear your mask when you come to worship. So just have your mask. If you don't have one, we'll have them for you. But we definitely want to make sure that we are um, worshiping in a safe um, environment and that you'll feel comfortable um, when you come into the house of the Lord. Amen. We're still going to give God praise. Amen. This is just something that we're asking for uh, those that are going to be in attendance to do is wear a mask when you come in uh, to the sanctuary on Sunday. But listen, we love you with the love of the Lord. Make plans. Bring everybody. Bring everybody with you on uh, March the 20th. Bring your family, bring your friends, and come worship with us on March the 20th. Listen, I love you with the love of the Lord. I pray that you have a blessed rest of your day, that you walk in his favor and his peace and his grace all week long. And I'll see you back here Wednesday at 730. Go in peace. I love you. God bless.